Hello, this is Dean Tagaji from VentureBeat. I'm here with uh, Jeff Urich from uh, Nanosys. How are you doing? Good, how are you? So we have some uh, interesting uh, technology for uh, the, the color of uh, TVs here. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us about it, Jeff? Sure, so in this TV here, you're seeing uh, uh, that has been enhanced by our uh, quantum dot enhancement film. Mm -hmm. It's a, a new kind of uh, backlight technology we developed. Uh, mm -hmm. that shows a much wider range of color than your standard TV. Mm -hmm. uh, both these TVs, we went and bought them off the shelf. This is a standard TV that you would see in Best Buy or, or any other uh, mm -hmm. store like that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I can, I can see a color difference with my own eyes here, but right. uh, uh, we're shooting through video here that uh, is not perfectly capturing it. So uh, the one on the left to me does look more, uh, I guess you, the word is saturated with color. Right. Uh, it's got, exactly. it's got more variety to the color, I think. Yeah. So one, one of the ways we talk about it is mm -hmm. as a percentage of what your human eye can see. Mm -hmm. So this TV does about 35% of what you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, this TV is doing about 64, 65% mm -hmm. of what the human eye can detect. Mm -hmm. So it's a much wider range of color than you're used to seeing on a TV. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you're not, your viewers are probably not going to be able to see the difference unless they have this screen. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, standard LCD on a laptop or uh, even a television you simply can't show mm -hmm. those, uh, mm -hmm. those deeper uh, reds and greens. In particular. Yeah, it's, it's deeper, dar darker, I guess, uh, more variety, it seems. Uh, yeah, deeper, but, uh, more saturated. On the when screen you, here, it doesn't look so different. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, uh, on your camera, yeah. yeah. When you look at them side by side, you see yeah. this is going to be an orangier red, and this uh, is a more pure red. Yeah, I think we can tell that. That one on the right is more orange. Um, you've got iPads here as well that have right. this technology and the, the yeah. one on the left as well. Um, Same, right. And it's the one on the left is what percentage then? So the one on the left is, this is actually going to be more like 40% of what your eye can see and this is like 20%. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. similar uh, uh, delta, in, uh, but uh, the iPad starts out with much less mm -hmm. color. So. And you can apply this quantum dot technology to uh, to basically any screen here. Yeah, any mm -hmm. uh, any LCD display, mm -hmm. any and any place you'd use a, a, a display like that. And can you explain the technology how it works too? Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're fundamentally doing is changing the backlight. So I don't know if your viewers are familiar with the way an, an LCD works, but mm -hmm. in general, there's a light source behind the panel, mm -hmm. and that's shining through um, filters at the pixels. Mm -hmm. Each pixel has three little sub-pixels, mm -hmm. red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. And to make the colors that you see, the pixels are mixing different amounts of red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. So to make yellow, you mix red and green. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the quality of the light behind the pixels matters. Mm -hmm. If there isn't a lot of red in that white light, white light is made up of all of the colors, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be able to get a very good color of red through your filter. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we engineer a new spectrum of light for the backlight that mm -hmm. precisely matches the, uh, s the spectrum of red, green, and blue that the filters are looking for. Mm -hmm. And we do that using quantum dots. Mm -hmm. These are <coughs> tiny nanocrystals that we grow here. Mm -hmm. They're all between the size of a water molecule and a virus. They're very small, 2 to 8 nanometers in diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, and by changing the size of the crystal, we can change the wavelength of light that they got. We stimulate them with a blue mm -hmm. uh, light source. Mm -hmm. And we're able to create reds, oranges, yellow, green. Mm -hmm. We can precisely make any wavelength of light that we want to make, again, to match the performance of the TV that, uh, of the uh, color filters that our customers might request. Mm -hmm. And very pure colors. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about things that are on a, a nanotechnology level here, very, right. very, very small. Very, very <laughs> tiny. Okay. And yep. then this is the filter here? Yeah, so what we do is we take uh, a mix of red and green dots mm -hmm. and with a blue light source, which blue is a very common, very efficient, very cheap LED. Mm -hmm. We let the blue from the LED pass through and that's the blue that your eye sees. Mm -hmm. But by mixing with the red and green, we're able to actually make a white light. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, blue turning into white. Mm -hmm. and this is a piece of film that has a mix of red, green, and, red and green dots uh, in a kind of a polymer matrix. We kind of spread mm -hmm. out on this film and put another piece of plastic on top of it. Mm -hmm. And we stick that in the back uh, um, backlight of the LCD TV. Mm -hmm. So how, how soon could we see this technology at uh, some uh, TVs at Best Buy or something like that? Yeah, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll be seeing them in um, 
laptop, tablet size form factors first half of next year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and within next year, we'll be seeing larger TVs. So, mm -hmm. so TV makers like this because they, they can really sell a TV that really does look different from the 40 other TVs in the store. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I think if you see this in, in the store, it's a really visceral, really mm -hmm. vibrant uh, value proposition. So mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're in there now, and they're talking about 240 hertz. and if you can see the stitches on the baseball or something like that, that's a lot <laughs> more subtle value proposition. You walk in, it's immediately clear which one you'd, you'd prefer in this case, uh -huh. I think. And this, we're looking at still images here. Does this work uh, uh, good for moving images too? It works uh, fantastic mm -hmm. with video. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, as we were learning about this, uh, we found out that Hollywood mm -hmm. uh, has been shooting on film, which is a very high color gamut um, medium, mm -hmm. and actually digital uh, movies that are shot in digital, shot in much higher color gamut than the TVs today can display. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're looking at movies, um, and there's an opportunity for Hollywood to sort of remaster all the movies that they've sold you already mm -hmm. uh, with much higher color gamut, but it's very uh, impactful. Yeah. So the, the background of this invention, how, how far does this go back, I guess, uh, as far as thinking about what to, what to do with the nanotechnology? With the, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> quantum dots have been used in a variety of applications. That's true of a lot of the, kind of the nanotechnology mm -hmm. um, uh, technologies. Uh, boy, a lot of their work uh, mm -hmm. comes out of uh, Munji Boindi's lab at MIT, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, mm -hmm. that, that was analysis licensed in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that work was largely done in the 1990s, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, since then, analysis has uh, developed over 750 patents mm -hmm. um, in-house. In um, cool. Well, interesting things that nanotechnology can bring us here. Uh, see if we can get some better TVs out of this. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thanks.